Hello and welcome to this brand new Data Engineering on Databricks. In this new episode, I'm going to show you how to integrate Data Build tool, popularly known as DBT, with Databricks SQL Warehouse using the VS Code Editor. So let's understand why we need DBT on Databricks SQL. Using DBT in VS Code on Databricks allows data engineers to write, test, and deploy SQL transformation models in a collaborative version controlled space that combines the user-friendly adaptability of VS Code with the scalable, powerful platform of Databricks, making it easier to build and manage reliable data pipelines. Now, in this, we have some commands that are associated with DBT, which you need to know. For example, we have what's called the DBT unit, which basically creates a new DBT project with standard project structure. We have the DBT run, which compiles models and executes them, building tables of views in your target database. We have the DBT test, which run tests on your data models to validate data quality and integrity. The DBT compile compiles the SQL models to produce executable SQL without actually running them. And the DBT seed, which is going to be the core part of today's video, loads CSV files from the data directory into your target database as a seed data. The DBT snapshot tracks historical changes by capturing snapshots of your data at specific intervals. And the DBT docs generate, generates documentation from your models, test, and schema definitions. DBT debug validates your DBT configuration and database connectivity to ensure your environment is set properly. Now, let's go into the demonstration. If you're new to this channel, please click on the subscribe button and toggle on the bell icon to be informed of new videos. See you in the demo part. As a prerequisite for this video, you need to have installed Python, VS Code, and Git on your local laptop. I have already done all of this. Now I'm going to open the timeline in the VS Code editor and check the version of the Python and Git installed. To do that, I'm going to come to the timeline at the top menu and I click on the new timeline. So I'm going to type in Python dash dash version and press enter. So I've got Python 3.12.7 installed. Now I'm going to type in git dash dash version and press enter. So I've got the Git version 2.48.1.1 Windows.1 installed. Now I'm going to proceed to install the DBT CLI using the pip install dbt databricks. So I'm going to type in p install dbt databricks and I'm going to press enter. Now I've already installed the packages and all the dependencies so we can see the requirements already satisfied coming up. Now, if you're doing it for the first time, you're going to see all the packages and the dependencies installed. Now, having done all of this, I'm going to type in the clear command to clear the content. And I'm going to type dbt dash dash version to see the version installed. Okay, so we can see the installed version is 1.9.3, which is the latest version. Now, you can see all the plugins that are associated with this, which are the Databricks. Fabric, Snowflake, and Spark. I'm going to cover all of this in future video, but for now, let's focus on the Databricks. Now, we're going to proceed to create Databricks SQL Warehouse in the user interface. So, I'm going to come here, and this is the Databricks, and I'm going to come to the SQL Warehouses, create new SQL Warehouse. I'm going to call this one DBT SQL Warehouse Demo. And I'm going to maintain all of these details and click on create. So I'm going to cancel these manic permissions. And in a matter of about 20 seconds or less, we have the warehouse created and the status is running. So we can see the name, the type, cluster size, auto stop, scaling, channel, and created bar. Now I'm going to proceed to create a folder to add our project in the VS Code editor. So I'm going to come here. And I'm going to click on, or just type in clear to clear the content of the terminal. Now, I want to open folder, file, and then open a folder. And I want to go to my VS Code workspace, and I want to create a brand new folder for this. I'm going to call this one Databricks DBT folder. And I'm going to type in new and press enter to create the folder. Now, I want to go right into the folder, and I can select the folder. So we're going to see changes on this interface here. So we have this folder open without any content. 
that's cool. Now we're going to proceed to create a new DBT project with a standard project structure. So to do that, I'm going to come to the terminal again and then create a new terminal. So we're going to issue the DBT init. So I'm going to type in DBT init and I'm going to press enter. Okay, so we can see running with DBT version 1.9.3 and then we can see we need to provide a name for our project now we can see this logs in the log we have this dbt.logs so i'm going to type a name i'm going to go to my dbt project demo and i'm going to press or let me just type in demo press enter so we can see happy modeling and we can see this setting up your profile which database would you like to connect to? We can connect to any of these four ones. And we can also see the mydbt project.demo folder. Now I'm going to come to this later on. So I'm going to type in one here to connect to the Databricks and press enter. So we're going to provide the host name. To get the host name, I'm going to come here and I can come to the connections details and I can see the server host name here. I can also see the same host name at the in the URL. So I'm going to copy from here. Anyone is fine. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to right click. And this is automatically pasted. I can press enter to commit. And then we need to provide the hypertext transfer protocol path. So come back here, copy this here, which is this HTTP path. And then I can come here, I can right click, press enter, and then we can use a token to authenticate a personal access token. So I'm going to type in one, and then we have the token required. So get the token, come back here, I can click on create a personal access token. I can also click on this, and then I can see the option to generate a new token. And I can see the token generated with the DAPI as the starting numbers or the letters. Copy it to the clipboard. I can also see that underneath here. And come back to the VS Code, right click, press enter, and we are fully authenticated. So we can use a Unity catalog to store all our models and our data set. We can also choose not to use it. Now, I'm not going to use it for this demonstration just to show you. I'm going to type in tool that is don't use Unity catalog. Press enter. Now, because of this, we're going to provide a default schema. So I'm going to come here. Let me explain what is going to happen. When you come to the catalog here, we have all of this, you know, um, the catalog. But in this case, we're not specifying a specific catalog. This simply means all our models and data sets would be deployed to this Hive Metastore. So let me quickly, I can show you, but let's just go on because of time. Oh, let me just select this and let me connect to this and close. So it's going to be stored under the default, uh, how they go, default. Um, schema. So let's come back here and then I can type in default and press enter. So for the thread, I'm going to type in one and then press enter. And there we go. Profile my dbt project underscore demo written to this location using the target profile underscore template dot yaml and your supplied value. So we can run the dbt debug to validate our connection credentials. Now, before we go on, we can see we have this my dbt project as I've mentioned. Now when I expand, we can see we have this dbt underscore project.yaml. Now this file is the central configuration for any dbt project. It acts as the blueprint for our project, which allows us to define key settings, directories, and default behavior for how project is structured and executed. So when you click on it, you can see the content. Now you need to have some experience in order to understand what to modify and what not to modify here. And I'm going to come to my C drive and let me come here. So we want to see the profile. So come to this and we can see that is stored in the .dbt. So we have the profiles.yaml. Now this is an important configuration for dbt that contains all the connection details and credentials needed to connect to our target data warehouse. So for this, we have the name of our project and then we have the output. So this is there and then because we did not specify any catalog name, so this actually given us no. So this simply means that as I mentioned, all our models and data sets will be deployed to the Hive Metastore. And then we can see the host, the HTTP path, the schema that we define, and then the thread, and then the token we supplied to authenticate. And the type is JetBricks plugin, and then we have the target dev. So I'm going to come back to this later on, so I can close this later on. Now we can go on and CD into the 
my dbt product we created in order to be able to run the debug otherwise we're going to get an error so i'm going to come here and i can use the cd and i'm going to type in my underscore dbt underscore project underscore demo exactly what i've got here and press enter so you can see i've i'm right within that folder now now i can use the dbt debug so i'm going to press enter now the dbt debug basically validate dbt configuration and database connectivity to ensure our environment is properly set up and up and running so press enter to run amazing so we can see we have established connection to our profiles and our dbt files so we have this using profile you know dot dbt and then we can see the adapter is databricks and then we can see profiles dot yaml file is okay and this is valid dbt projects dot yaml file is also okay and valid and then the git is also valid and then we can see the connection the host the http path catalog which is the eyes meta store as i mentioned you can see and then we can see the schema is default register adapter is data breaks and then we can see the connection is okay and all checks is fully passed now we're going to proceed to load some sample csv files into this seed location now the seed basically allows us to load data into a target database as a seed data so we can also see we have analysis logs macros models now i'm going to focus on the models in the future video but for now we have this default to my first dbt model.sql and then my second dbt model model.sql so i'm going to quickly open this folder that contains three csv file i've got customer payment product and the content of the customer is this now if you want to use the c you want to make sure that your column do not contain any space if there's any space here it's not going to work so you can use either underscore or just combine them together for this to work so i'm going to minimize this and then i can come here well, let me just open this and i can select this three csv files select the three and just move it to the seeds and then drop it in so we can see the customer payment and the product so we can investigate we can check this out we can check this out that's cool now having done this we can go on and issue the dbt run command so i'm going to quickly you know clear this content so that we can see the bottom and there we go. So I'm going to type in dbt.run. Now, when I run this, this is going to deploy all the models, excluding the CSV file. So I'm just going to run this without running the dbtc. So let me just run this. And as soon as I run it, we're going to see what happens. Okay, so we can see this completed successfully. So we can see we have two models, three seeds, and then we have four data sets and 607 macros. Now I'm going to come to my the user interface and I can refresh. So as soon as I refresh, I can expand and I'm going to see, oh, this actually created an, oh, there's an incorrect spelling here. No problems. So I can see I've got this, my first DBT and then my second DBT. Cool. Now the data set will not deploy because we did not use the DBT seed to upload that so i'm going to come back to the vs code and then i'm going to you know type in the clear to clear the content so i'm going to type in dbt c now this is going to this command is going to upload all those files and load them as a table into the target sql warehouse so i can go on and press enter to run this dbt c amazing so we can see this also completed successfully so we can see um the run we can see the number of rows inserted we can see 10 10 so basically we have um 10 rows in each of the files so this succeeded now let's come to the user interface and check this out so i'm going to refresh again so because i'm refreshing i'm going to expand this and there we go so we can see we have the customer and when i click on that i can see the sample data which is absolutely cool and they, i can also check the payments and then we can see the data so this is actually in form of a delta table i can also see the product and there we go so we can use this data you know we can query we can do all sorts of things and the interesting part is that the schema were also inferred so we can see we have this um, as int we have the string and then we have all the decima and so on and so forth that is cool so what about if i change the profile location let's say i just want to you know upload this data this product payment and the customer to maybe um this dbt 
schema of the sales catalog. How do I do that? It's super easy. Now to do that, I'm going to come to the C drive where we have the .dbt. So I'm going to come here and then I want to go to the users and then I can go to the APL. I can go to the .dbt. Now we can see we have the profiles. So now I can specify a catalog name. I'm going to call this one sales underscore catalog and then I can change the name of the schema. So I'm going to call this one um, dbt underscore schema okay so let me just type in the right word so i'm going to quickly check it out so sales underscore catalog as the catalog name dbt underscore schema so you can see i've got the sales underscore catalog and the dbt underscore schema so i need to make sure that i press ctrl s to save these changes in the profile.yaml and once i save that close that so i can come back to the vs code and i'm going to come back here now before i issue the dbt i'm saved let's quickly check here you can see i've got no data let me just refresh so that i just refresh you can see we have no data and let's come back to the vs code and issue the dbt c and press enter okay so all of this completed successfully now let's come here and i can refresh so when I expand the catalog, the DBT schema, there we go. So we can see we have the customer payment and product. Now, this simply means we are excluding and um, deploying the models. We have to use the DBT run to upload the models, but we just want to focus on the data set. So you can see we have the data here. So that is cool. So that's basically how we can make some changes in the profiles.yaml file. So this is just uh, an introduction to DBT on Databricks. In the future video, as I've mentioned, I'm going to show us how we can, you know, write models and write um, CTE, create models and deploy and make some amazing transformation so i trust you in this video if you do like comment share and follow me for more practical data engineering thank you for watching bye for now